Yeah, no, no, it doesn't work like that. Before we start, hello, Gnome. I am, can someone tell me if they can hear me fine? Does the sound okay? Thank you, Sheehan Jennifer. All right, let's get started. People that are coming in can come on in. So you can just go, let's go, uh, yeah, let's go one and two. That's fine. That's fine. That one's perfect. And everyone, Shin Zen Bao. Ice. Bao Shaki Sheehan. Ice. Courtesy here. Ice. Senpai Adri. Ice. Senpai Christian. Ice. Any black belts at home? Senpais. Ice. And lower belts at home. Ice. Good. Feet together, hands together, and mock so. So I have eight and no ray. Very good. One last time, Shinzen bow. Good. You guys just move forward one step into the next box and move around shadow box. Go. Something I to move or shut off. Oh well, don't remember. So those of you that were with us last week, and I don't actually mean in this class, unfortunately, this class like bombed out last week. Hold on, let me see if I can give you guys a little more space here. Whoops. Aha. Uh -huh. Get a little better angle of the camera. There we go. Okay, so uh, those of you that were with us in any class last week, we were focusing on the idea of our feet generating the power for our upper body techniques, our punches and our strikes, our blocks. So we were thinking about how we twisted our feet, how we made it so that we were our punches and our upper body techniques. This week, we're going to focus when we get to it on our kicks with how your feet can add power to the kick. So obviously you're thinking, oh, well, well, yeah, I kick with my feet. No, the kicking leg and then the base leg. What do we do with our base foot to start generating power for our kick? So now as you're warming up and moving around, I want you to take a moment to notice what your base foot does on all of your kicks. You don't have to make any adjustments. You don't have to change anything. Just pay attention to what your base foot, the leg that's on the ground, feels like when you kick. And we're going to investigate it a bit more later. What was Baptiste? Who else did I miss? And Yame. Very good. Stretch out on your own. 30 seconds. Let's focus on the upper body. We're going to go fast through our basics at the beginning. If anyone is following the class who's never trained with us before, I'm going to recommend, this is something you can even particularly do at home, not as embarrassing as in the dojo. Just watch how they do the first couple of techniques and then catch up by the third or fourth. So as we go slow, you just look at what they're doing. Don't try to stay neck and neck with them. You don't have to. Just copy starting on like the second, third, or fourth technique. Again, for anyone who's joining us for the first time. And yoy. Right leg forward, right Sanjindachi, both hands up, Kamaite. Since we're going to be focusing on our kicks later, we're going to go pretty fast through our upper body basics to start. Both fists out, right fist pull back, punching to the stomach, slow and strong with a deep breath. Itch. Ni. San. Chi. Go. Rook. Punching fast. Ready. Itch. Ni. Sun. Chi. Go. Rook. Sitch. Hatch. Ku. Jo. Yeah. Very good. Bring it up to the face. Jodan Suki. Slow and strong with a buki. Itch. Ni. Sun. Chi. 
Go. Rook. And fast. Itch. Ni. Sun. Chi. Go. Rook. Sitch. Hatch. Ku. Ju. Yeah. Gonna punch down low. Last set of a buki. Itch. Ni. Sun. Chi. Go. Rook. Punching fast. Itch. Ni. Sun. Chi. Go. Rook. Sitch. Hatch. Ku. Jo. Yeah. All three. Up, middle, down. Jodan, Chudan, Gaidan, also known as Sanbon Suki. Ready? Itch. Ni. Sun, for those of you at home, this might be the first spot where I kind of lose you, right? The goal is to throw three repeated punches always with your chamber hand. Chi. One, two, three. Starting with the chamber hand again, just throw three punches. If you're falling apart at throwing the three heights, just throw all three to the same height. Go. Up, middle, down. Like three stomach punches or three face punches. Rook. Sitch. Hatch. Cool. And joke. Yeah. We're going to put a loud key eye on the third punch each time. Ready? Hitch. Yeah. Knee. Yeah. Sun. Yeah. Chi. Yeah. Go. Yeah. Rook. Yeah. Sitch. Yeah. Hatch. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Joke. Very nice. Right leg pulls back. Nore. Good. Everyone down in your stomach. Push up position. 30 seconds. Any style you'd like from here. Begin. Oh, we're getting some awesome light on these two guys. Those of you at home, I know you can get away without doing any of this part, but you'll know. And down, over onto your back, 30 seconds. What do they say? Honor is the gift a person gives themselves. Go, 30 seconds. So do the thing. All the way down. Let's stand up. Let's stretch, stretch our upper body a little bit in particular. So um, we're gonna move on to our back fist strikes from here. Back up here, make sure I'm in camera. We're gonna go to our back fist strike. And often, you know, basic punches, because you come to a stop at each at the end of each one, you're a little less likely to tweak something. You're actually often, if you're gonna tweak something, throwing basic punches, it's gonna be in your back and your shoulders. It's not gonna be in your arms so much. But back fist strikes, all of them snap out and back. So you go all the way to the extension of your bicep and then you yank it back. Very easy to start feeling it in your elbows and the tendons or even the bicep, the muscle itself. So we're gonna stretch our triceps and our biceps. Let's do it together. So first one, anytime you bend your elbow a lot, and then pull your elbow across. For example, this one doesn't stretch your triceps. It just stretches your shoulders and your back. Let's bend our elbow, go above our head. And now I want to pull the elbow across so that we can feel it in the back of our arm. Sometimes that actually means pushing your shoulder away from you. The goal is to feel it back here. And so if you're feeling it in your shoulder, you're pulling too far across. Instead, resist by kind of pushing your shoulder out so that we feel it in the back of the arm. Getting our triceps, then we'll get into our biceps in a moment. You're gonna actually need like something in your home for that. And switch arms. And so the method for stretching our bicep, you can relax your arms down, guys, is to find a surface. It can be the wall. Why not uh, you guys go on over to the wall across from me? Hopefully you guys, I'll go over the mirror here, then you guys can definitely see in the camera. And so put a hand 
against the wall so that the idea is that you can hyperextend your elbow a little bit by using the friction on the wall. Here's the key though. If I move my chest without moving my shoulder, I'll feel the stretch in my shoulder and my chest. And that's a great spot to stretch. But if I leave my shoulder and chest where it is and make my, like imagine like we're wearing a cast on my shoulder, I can't move my shoulder. And so I turn my body and you'll now feel it down by your bicep and forearm instead. And so that's what I want to get into is this muscle right here, our bicep, uh, you know, muscles at the beach muscle, because that's the one yeah, that will feel if when we snap and you can turn your head even more away from your arm. Good. Switch to the other arm and then we'll move on to our back fist strikes. And we're, I'm just showing these here so that you can maybe add them to your own practice before class on your own. This is right now for about 15 seconds, the worst video in history. It's barely either one of you on frame. Okay. And shake out your arms. Both of you run back into position. And picking up left, San Chindachi. Come I take. So our left foot comes forward now. And now fists together, you're rocking Shomenuchi position. I've been mentioning a lot in class recently about the idea of when we're in San Chindachi and our arms are up, fists outside your elbows because it engages this spot. We don't want that for this strike. Quite the opposite. Why? Because these are the muscles that we use to start punching the power for our back fist. So now you want your fists on the inside of your elbows so that this muscle is relaxed a little bit so it can generate power from the shoulder and from the chest. Begins the power that's in those back fist strikes. You're rocking shomenuchi. Ready? Right hand first. Itch. And right out of the gate, you might feel it in that bicep and you'll notice, hey, I've already warmed that up. I'm okay. Left arm. Neat. Sun. Chi. Go, rook, sitch, hatch, ku, jo. Yeah. Good, fist to fist. You're rocking sayuchi, exact same motion, but laterally to the right and then to the left. Itch. Again, if these are new for you, just watch the first couple and catch up on the third or fourth. Ni, sun, later classes you'll know the techniques. Chi, go, rook, sitch, hatch, ku, jo. Right fist on top of left, Yurakin Fury Uchi. Ready? Itch. So it's another strike to the side, but if you notice the posture of their fist stays the way it is now. Neat, you don't turn it over. Sun. Chi. Go. Rook. Sitch. Hatch. Ku. Ju. Yeah. Left arm up, right arm in chamber. Yurakin Mawashi Uchi. The fourth and final. If you are a beginner or a white belt at all, this technique isn't necessary for you. You can do it. You can do it now. Just copy us, but you wouldn't need to know it. It's a little slightly more advanced. Yurakin Mawashi Uchi. Itch. Big circular back fist strike. Neat left arm. Sun. Chi. Go. Rook. Sitch. Hatch. Ku. Ju. We are putting these back fist strikes together. So bring our fists together. Everything will be right and left. So right shomenuchi, left shomenuchi, fist together. Right sayuchi, left sayuchi, right fist on top. Right feriuchi, left feriuchi. Got to set up the right one by bringing the left one up in the right hand in your chamber. Mawashiuchi, mawashiuchi. Come on back here. If you mess up somewhere in the combination, not the end of the world. Come back here to start the next series. Ready? All eight moves, returning to where we started. Itch. Showman, showman. Sai, sai. Fury, fury. Mawashi, mawashi. Very nice return. Again, neat. Return. Sun. Very nice. G. Go. Rook. Sitch. And last one, key eye on the last technique, hatch. And Nore, left leg pulls back. 
Very good. Stretch your legs out any way you'd like. If you can, stretch in a position where you can still look up and see the screen so I can explain our concept as we go into this uh, theme for the week of kicks. I often have to explain it the most in like the very first classes of the, like the, I had the 11 a.m. class this morning and now this one. We'll explain it in the most depth and then have to explain it less further in the week. And by the end of the week, hopefully it'll be built in to everything you're doing without almost any explanation. Okay, so the idea is this. An analogy I use quite often in all of our uh, techniques is the idea of like uh, compounding the energy. So if you were throwing a baseball, let's say, let's say I could throw a baseball at 50 miles an hour, right? It's probably, even that is probably optimistic. Let's say I could throw a baseball at 50 miles an hour. If I was on a train that was traveling also 50 miles an hour, so on a train traveling 100 miles an hour, and I threw that ball at 50 miles an hour, um, to someone standing on the ground over there, that ball would be traveling through the air at 150 miles an hour, or whatever the two forces put together. So it's the same idea with a technique. When my, when my shoulder flies through the air, and the punch comes off of it, it hits a lot harder than if my shoulder stays in one spot and I just punch. My shoulder's traveling through the air at whatever speed it's going, my fist then follows behind, and the force in which something hits is specifically just simply the mass times the, the speed the thing is traveling, squared if you wanna keep your physics going. But that's the idea. However fast that technique is going is how hard it's gonna hit. So we want the shoulder to move forward, we want the fist to go behind it. Same thing with our kicks. If I can make my hip go forward faster, then the kick itself is gonna be faster and it's gonna hit harder. This is why back leg kicks hit harder than front leg kicks, because that hip is moving forward. Think of our basic front snap kick, right? Your back hip comes forward. It's much stronger than the front leg front snap kick, even though our legs are probably equal strength. How does this play into the foot? So our foot that is on the ground is gonna be the first point of power. So that foot is gonna turn. Now, with front kick, the first one we're gonna do, it's not gonna turn a ton, and that's why we're starting with it. It's just gonna turn a tiny bit, but that tiny bit goes into your hip, and it pulls your left hip back, which is gonna, because your hips are in one straight line, bring your right hip forward. So we're gonna be throwing that front snap kick with our right leg, we're focusing on our left foot. So to make life easier, at the beginning, we're not gonna throw the full front snap kick. We're simply gonna throw the knee kick. So our left foot is gonna turn and we're gonna bring our knee forward, straight forward. But the key is focus down here. You'll see when we actually do the kick at the end, it's gonna have more on it. Turn this foot, let the hips follow, knee going straight forward. Try to avoid doing this. My knee ends up going that way. I'm exaggerating slightly, but only slightly. Turn that base foot, let your knee come straight forward. Feel the connection from here to here. At the moment when your foot is turned the most, and your knee is coming forward the most, your hips are gonna be wide open, meaning that you're gonna, some of you might have a limitation in flexibility. Turn your foot, drive your knee straight forward. Stand up, guys. We're gonna do this from a modified front stance. So right leg back, Zen Kutsudachi, but relax a little bit. So you shouldn't feel like you're at the end of your reach, but you're also not in a fighting stance necessarily either. It's kind of halfway front, st front, front uh, leaning stance. Both hands up. So we're driving our right knee forward and then bringing it back on each count. Focus on your base foot. Ready? Itch. Good. Bring it forward, Adri, the knee, because think like it will then be front snap kick, not up. Ready? Knee. What we're really doing with this kick is we're taking the end of the kick out of the equation, just so we don't have so much to think about, and we're doing everything up to the chamber. Sun. Drive that knee straight forward, and we're going to make it a full front kick in a minute. Go. Again, not up, forward. Rook. Yes. Now focus on your base foot. Sitch. Yeah. Hatch. Good. Coop. Joop. Good. So now stay in this stance. We're going to go right away into the full front snap kick. Let the leg go. And I bet you'll feel a little more on it than before. If you were using your hips a lot before, if you were twisting hard into your front kick, this is only going to add a bit, but it is going to add something. Ready? Front snap kick. Itch. Yeah. Let that base foot turn. Neat from the ground up. Yes. Son, these two guys are already uh, phenomenal kickers, but I'm sure they're already feeling a little bit more. Go. Yeah. Rook. Good. Sitch. Turn the base foot just a little. Hatch. Yeah. Go. Go. Yeah. Very nice. Switch your feet. Right leg in front, left leg back. We're just doing the driving knee straight in. Imagine like you're trying to kick down a door, but with your knee instead of your foot. Itch. 
Yes. Ni. Very good. Sun. Chi. Go. Rook. Sitch. Hatch. Cool. Joe. Yeah. Very good. Switch your feet. All right. We're going to move on to roundhouse kick, but we're going to do something slightly different. So the idea now, this one, just look at my base foot if you guys can see it there at home. I hope so. This foot on roundhouse kick turns a lot. It turns almost 180 degrees. Not quite. When we get to side kick, that's going to be the one that turns all the way. But it turns almost the whole way. The issue for many people is that with all of your weight on that leg, turning it becomes a problem. Maybe in the dojo on like a wood floor that's nice and, sl and, 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 and uh, slick, you can turn it easily. Um, I noticed in the part classes we've been having recently, people wearing sneakers, your feet get stuck on the ground a little more. So one of the tricks that good kickers will do if you like actually pay attention, they may not even realize they're doing it, is as we start to kick, there's a small getting of your weight off of your foot by a hop. And your foot is almost not on the ground at all, at the point of, of throwing the kick. You're barely grazing the ground. Sometimes people even hop off the ground entirely. We don't need to do all that. You ever see someone throw a big hard roundhouse kick and they fall, their like, leg goes out from underneath them? That actually means they were doing part of it like really right. They just overdid it and lost their balance. So that's the idea. So what we're gonna practice now, again, just the chamber, but what we're gonna practice is this foot, again, hopefully you guys at home can see this on the camera. As we lift this up hop to turn the foot. The goal is to be able to turn our foot as fast as possible. And again, very subtle. I probably have to tape it and like slow it down. I'm coming up and spinning with almost no connection to the ground. If I were to exaggerate it, everyone look at my foot, it would look like this. I'm literally turning into a jump kick. We don't need to do that. Just up, twist. That is going to turn our foot, turn our hips, whip the other hip around. We're only throwing it as a chamber now so we can focus on this foot. That's it. Bring it on back. That's it. That twisting of that base foot. Focus on the base foot. Let's give it a try. Right leg's back. Modified front stance. And itch. Ooh, very nice. Yeah. Knee. Twist. Very good. Focus on the base foot. Don't even worry about what the right leg does. Sun. Yeah. Chi. Excellent. Again, both of these guys are super experienced kickers. Also, this is one of the reasons why, like, the frame they both possess is really great for kicking. It's not necessary, right? I can do it, you know, I probably weigh about the two of them put together, but, <laughs> give or take, but, right, being light and long, it's not just that you have long, light kicks, it's that you can get your weight off the ground more easily. Go. Nice, yep. Rook. Sitch. Hatch. Cool. Do. Yeah. Very nice. We're going to turn that all the way into the full roundhouse kick. Do everything at the beginning the same. Just let your leg extend off at the end. You're going to see an improvement. Itch. Yeah. Very nice. Neat. Sun. Good, Adria. Nice, Christian. Go. Rook. Sitch. Hatch. Go. Cool. Go. Yeah. Switch your legs. Let's try the left leg. Right leg's in front. Take your time with this. No one at home take a fall. Left leg. Knee kick only as I'm coming around. It's not an actual kick. It's just the chamber. Ready? Itch. Nice. Twist that right foot. By the way, one of these sides is going to be way better than the other. If this is your weak side, work on it. Knee. Let that right foot hop. Get a little more off the ground, Christian. That's the good, that's the good knee on the ground, right? Oh, yeah. So, yeah. Twist it. Sun. Pop. Yeah. That explode. It, it, I should say. I'm really speaking to somebody, Christian, here because this is kind of an advanced idea. But like the t the moment your fist your foot starts turning, it should be like instant. It, the faster it actually turns, the, that'll cascade into your kick. Cheat, right? Snap. That's like when they say about a kick snapping. Go, but like we want that snap everywhere. 
Rook. As you're doing a wind up on it, don't wind up. Like right before you start, you're like stepping up and then going. See if you can just throw it from there. Sitch. Your stance can be a little bigger, but like, yeah, I'm just saying, yeah. Let the weight go up, 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 twist. Hatch, up, up, up. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Mm -hmm. We're not doing the full kick though yet, Adri. Just the chamber. And ju. Yeah. Uh -huh. All right, now we're doing the full kick. Adri got some extra ones in. Ready? Itch. Yeah, Christian, that's like, yeah. Neat. Yeah. Don't worry about coming down so hard, Adri. You're worrying too much about the noise. Sun. Yeah, nice. Relax the upper body. Cheat. You're not used to throwing a back leg, left leg. That's why it feels weird. Go, but the same twist happens even if it was the front leg. Maybe we'll work on that later in the week. Rook. Nice, Christian, yep. Sitch. Nice, yep. Hatch. Cool. Joe. Yeah. Excellent. Everyone, no, all right. Yeah. Stretch your legs out. Actually, no, I'm sorry. Down in your stomach push-up position. Let's get the second set in, and then we'll stretch our legs. 30 seconds. Begin. Anything you want. So we will save sidekick for later in the week, just so we don't use up too much time. We don't have time for other stuff. And just like we've been focusing on, on over the last um, few weeks... Whenever a new concept like this is brought into play, the whole goal is simply while you are doing some of your basics, you are paying attention to something. All the way down, onto your back, 30 seconds from here. Begin. Anything you'd like. Now what some of you may notice, we only did two of our more basic techniques our front kick and our roundhouse kick, you might feel it more than you have before. All the way down, stretch your legs. So you may feel that in your hips, your hamstrings more. That's a good sign. It means that you were generating more power with that movement of the base foot. And you're, you know, to a certain degree, your rest of your body has to control and contain that power. Not always insignificant. Okay, we're going to move on to some katas. When we reach katas that have kicks in them, the first one is pinon two, first kata that has a kick in it, and then some of the pinon katas, katas beyond that also, I would like you to try and notice these moments. So quite a few, like pinon two, the side kick, pinon four, the side kicks, um, any of the black belt katas that also have those long series of side kicks. Um, most of those are thrown from a position where you're not, you don't get to wind up at all. There are some katas of pinon four has some front kicks where you're doing it from a nice front stance. And so you get to wind that one up, but all the other ones it's done from something static. So the power has to come from inside because you don't get to wind it up. I don't mean like energy. I just mean you don't get to take a step. So therefore it comes from the foot. It comes from the hips. It comes from everything else there. Apply this foot idea from today. You two guys here, let's stand up. Senpai, Adri, go on over to the first square there, and let's see where we are. Oh, yeah, no, that's perfect. You're right on the camera, just where we want. Good. And yoy. We're going to start Taiki Kata number three. No kicks in this kata, so we don't have to worry about that. So think about, in the kata, some concept that we've talked about in the last couple of weeks. Striking surfaces for your blocks and your punches. Using your feet to generate power for your blocks and your punches. Up to you, but pick a concept. Focus on that throughout. Take yoke number three, block to the left, inside block. Itch. Step and punch. Knee. Sun. Chi. Go. Rook. Base punches. Sitch. Hatch. Back leg turn. Coop. Uh, step. Take yoke three. Yep. Ju. Itch. Neat. 
Back up the middle. Sun. Face punches again. Cheat. Go. Rup. Back leg turn. Sitch. Hatch. Cool. Jill. No, all right. Very good. Mm -hmm. You guys can't see it so well on the camera. It was kind of intentional that it's kind of very visible sometimes, but not entirely visible. Um, we have boxes set up on the dojo floor now that are for social distancing for when we're able to actually have some people taking karate here in the dojo. Um, whether you're at home, whether you're training in a dojo, whether you're training in the park, whatever, most katas, you should finish the kata where you started it. So this is an opportunity to use what we've got here. And when you're training outdoors, you can kind of have a marker on the ground, something. You should finish most of your katas where you start. Not all of them. A couple of them aren't symmetrical. But most of them finish where we start. Yoy. Pinan kata number one. Lower block of the left. Itch. Ni. Turn. Sun. Cheat. Step and punch. Go, down the middle. Upper blocks, rook, sitch, hatch, yeah. back leg turn, two, two, itch, knee, back up the middle, sun, cheat, punches, go, rook, yeah. back leg turn. Sitch, Shuto, Mawashi, Uke. Hotch, again. Ko. Ju. Yep. No, all right. Let's see, the psychic will be there. Sampaji, why don't you go back to the box next to Christian? Yeah. Cool. And Pinan Kata number two. First kata now with some kicks in it. Ready? Yoi. Doesn't start that way though. Itch. For those that are uh, blue belt or lower, copy your best. Ni. Sun. You can also always substitute a lower kata here too. Chi. All right. Pause at Masubidachi, you guys. Go. So here we are. As we lift up this side kick, I know we didn't work on that specifically, but the idea stays the same. Your left foot, the one on the ground, is where a lot of the power comes from. Go. Boom. Very nice. Coming forward. Rook. Sitch. Hatch. Push. Step. Step. Back leg turn. Go. Ju. Itch. Ni. Sun. Chi. Go. Rook. Sitch. Hatch. Coop. Two. Yeah. Very nice. No, Ray. So as we start getting into more advanced katas, those of you at home, feel free to stay with us doing the same kata or go ahead and uh, uh, substitute any kata that you'd like. Pinan kata number three. So this kata has an, a few front snap kicks in it. They're easy to throw with power due to the stance that we're in, but let's still try to integrate our foot, our base foot, whoops, our base foot into the kata. Yoi. Pinan three, inside block to the left. Itch. Ni. Sun. Chi. Go. Rook. Sitch. So eight a uke. Push and stab. Hatch. Scoop and turn. Coo. Step punch ki eye. Joe. Yeah. We're turning. Itch. Right leg kick. Use your left foot to generate power. Knee. Nice. Sun. 
Chi. Go. Rook. Sitch. Step and punch. Hatch. Feet together out and around. Cool. And juke. Yeah. No, Ray, come back. Good. Just the lines back in your box. This is one kata that does not, especially if you do a big jump at the end, is not symmetrical. So that's fine if you didn't end up where you started. All right. Pinon kata number four. A couple more kicks. Yo, this is a green belt kata if you're below that rank. Feel free to copy it or substitute whatever kata you'd like. Itch. Ni. Sun. Chi. Go. Rook. Nice. Sitch. Hatch. Base foot. Very good. Coop. Cover. Use your left foot. Go. Nice. Yeah. Very good. Itch. Got a few more front kicks coming. Knee. Mm hmm. Sun. Cheat. Go. Rook. Sitch. Hotch, just the hands. Cool. Yeah. Two. Front leg pulls back. No, all right. Good. Adjust the lines a little bit. Moxo. San Chin Kata. Yoi. Right leg forward, both hands up. Itch. Neat. Sun. Chi. Go. Rook. Sitch across. Hatch. Coop. Juke. Itch. Neat. Go. Rook. No. Senpai, how'd you take Senpai Christian's spot? Senpai Christian going up to the top. Column position and face this way. Good. How'd you face in the red wall? And mock so once again. So again, as we start doing these katas that do not have kicks, right? It's not your chance for your mind to go wander somewhere else. It is the chance for you to apply one of the concepts from last week or the week before or anything else. Ten show kata. This is an advanced brown belt kata. Feel free to follow along or substitute. Yoi. Starts like Sanchin, right leg, both hands. Itch. Ni. Sun. Go. Rook. Sitch. Hatch. Cool. Juke. Itch. 
Neat. Very nice. Sun. Cheat. Go. Rook. Sitch. Hatch. Coop. Choop. And we take this all the way in to the Moxo. Very nice, guys. Nore. Come back. Third and final set, down in your stomach, 30 seconds. Feel free to have a static version or a move, dynamic version, whichever you prefer. Begin. And down onto your back, 30 seconds from here. Begin. And down. Rest here and breathe. So I was reading a book on building good life habits. And, you know, small ones, big ones, whatever. Just that habits, patterns lead to better performance in everything, lead to a better, better position. Getting rid of bad habits and promoting good ones habitualizing many things that we otherwise do like a game time decision. Like I learned this personally kind of anecdotally by just when I was a teenager and I was starting to train in karate and I loved it so much. It became a, I come to class on this day and this day and this day. I know that these two guys here are the same way. This is the days I come to the dojo and it becomes a habit. And so not going to the dojo on a Monday night felt like, you know, I was breaking my good habit. It felt wrong. It felt like I wasn't living like, the way I wanted to. An interesting part in this book about habits is a photography professor at, in, at a university decided to do a little experiment on his own and have two different classes, the same, same level class, same group of photography students with two different focuses. So one of the classes, he said, the volume of photographs that you provide me at the end of the semester will have a big impact on your grade. How many photos? Just simply the number. Good, bad, I don't care. The volume is one of the main things I'm paying attention to. And to the other group, he said, I only want a single photograph delivered at the end of the semester, and the quality of that photograph will be the basis for your grade. So a single photograph. And it turned out that the group where quantity was the thing that they wanted had the best photographs. And it's counterintuitive. You go, wait a minute, wait, wait, wait. All they cared about was getting photos out there the people that were focused on it being a perfect photo, why wasn't theirs better? And the answer is because practice matters. Volume matters. And so the people that were just doing a million photographs, they wanted to be good at photography. So it's not like they weren't caring and they weren't learning and they weren't, and they were getting so much more practice in. While the people that were, you know, asked to just give one great photograph at the end of the semester, they were so kind of locked in and trapped to trying to make the photo perfect. They got frozen in that kind of analysis of trying to theoretically come up with a perfect photo instead of just doing the thing. Do it and do it and do it and you, your body will figure out shortcuts, your mind will figure out shortcuts to doing the very best of it. But they often will say, like, perfect is the enemy of good. You try to make it perfect, you're not going to end up with anything that you want. Let's stand up.
Everybody, shin zen bow. Ois. Vash se kishan. Ois. Courtesy here. Ois. Senpai Adri. Senpai Christian. Any black belts at home? Os sensei senpais. Any lower belts at home? Ois. Thank you very much. Feet together, hands together. Makso. Makso yame. And all right. One last time, shin zen bow. Thank you guys very much. See you later in the week on Zoom or otherwise or in the park classes. Thank you again. Awesome. 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 Aw